VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. What an exciting moment for me. It's the official launch of my podcast, VIP Access Season 3. And I'm coming to you from South Africa. Thank you so much, Hauteng Tourism, for having me here. It's been an amazing time. And I'm really having a wonderful time meeting with different artists here and there, talking about the creative industry and being in the motherland of the home of Afro House, Ama Piano, and even electronic music. Today, I'm honored to be speaking to an amazing lady who comes from Soweto. She has a way of blending electronic music with melodic, soulful sounds. She got the groove. She's genre undefined. I mean, she's great at R&B, pop, jazz, gospel, name it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing. Bonge. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for being here. Hi. Thank you for having me. Hi. We finally meet. We finally get to meet. Oh my God, it's such an honor to meet you. Oh, I am honored. <laughs> the first, what? Launching the first what? I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you have such a boss name. Can we just talk about this name first? Where to get this name? What does it mean? Um, It's just a, a nickname that I actually, you know, got when I was in college at UCT. Um, I got it through actually a friend of mine, Tandine Dooley. We were just, you know, having a conversation after lunch, I think, you know, just chatting about the future, what we, you know, imagine what it's, it's going to look like and talking about what we're going to call ourselves, you know. And um, I think somehow we were talking about all of this. Tandin Dooley remembers that, oh, um, didn't you tell me about this one story um, about how in primary school, one of my Hindu teachers couldn't pronounce my actual name, Bongiwe. Mm -hmm. She pronounced it Bongiwe. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody thought this was funny. So she's like, actually, I think you should go Bonge. You should shorten that and use Bonge. And before I knew it, everybody started calling me Bonge in college. And yeah, it just, it sounded really cool. And I just, I've owned it, you know, since then. And for me also, I, I feel like it's like a nice play on the spelling of my name. So instead of using the G, I use the J. And yeah, that's where it comes from. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So one thing I absolutely love about you is, um, you know, how you package yourself, how you've accepted yourself for the fact that you're not one genre and not one genre defines who you are i want you to explain that to me you know you have classical training um in jazz music but you ended up being this artist who plays with all different sounds tell me about this versatility that you you know carry with you um i must say i mean you know my passion for music started from you know um at home and this is so it you know um family gatherings you know my both my parents are into music my sisters are into music um i know my mom and my dad were you know listening to jazz a lot of brenda fassi a lot of like dube um a lot of um who's this johnny clegg um and then my mom loved a lot of soul so aretha franklin um there was a lot of uh gospel you know what i mean um and then my sisters introduced me into guaido um my sisters introduced me into R&B um, and one of my sisters is actually a singer as well she's a choral singer so she'd always be playing music in the house and singing along and yeah I think those are some of my influences and I mean being influenced also by jazz because of like one of my favorite singers Ella Fitzgerald um, yeah you know so I think just going through my family records and then also that was the initial passion and then pursuing it um, because I started in high school as well I was in an art school in high school mm -hmm. so I was exposed to just art to to you know young people who are doing drama who are doing dance um, who are doing um, yeah art you know what I mean um, so yeah just that exposure to art that exposure to creativity um, just fueled my passion even more so that's how I even landed up you know at UCT and I mean at UCT that's Cape Town now you know and Cape Town was where I really got to experience the electronic music the ex experimental music the alternative you know music and that heavily influenced my journey before I came back to Johannesburg and 
yeah, why not? You know, why not play with, you know, all of those? Because it's part of my journey. It's it's part of the make of, you know, the type of artist that I am. And um, yeah, it's just been an exciting thing to be able to blend electronic music with everything that's influenced me mm. and that makes me um, who I am. And that, yeah, the sounds that have influenced me um, as a singer, as a songwriter as well. Um, yeah. Fantastic. I love it. I love it so much. So I got to know about you in 2021 when your debut music project, um, The Journal, came out. Um, I'm very curious to know, you know, what was the journey to that? Because mostly, you know, artists have this dope b video or you have a number one song, or you have an album or an EP. And that's when people think like this, this is you or you just started. But usually there's a long journey of, you know, blood, sweat and, sweat and tears you know, leading up to all this project. So I'm curious to know what was the journey in summary right before or way before this, you know, record dropped in 2021? Absolutely. I mean, while I was in Cape Town, I started a band um, where we're an electronic, soulful, you know, Afro pop outfit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I wrote some beautiful music with that band. We released an EP just, you know, two years just before I came back to Johannesburg. What was the name of the band? City. And, um, and yeah, some of the songs that I actually wrote with the band I took with me, you know, and songs like Ain't It True are songs that I wrote to the band. Um, Hangover, I wrote while I was actually working with the band as a live outfit. And yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> Some of the material, you know, and the EP are definitely songs like, you know, the song with the couple shivers was one of the most recent songs I'd written. Yes, Vela was also one of the most re written, I mean, recent songs that I had written mm -hmm. for the project. And so it was for me, it was almost like a mixture. I, and how I describe the EP itself is a sonic journey, you know, a sonic um yeah, a sonic uh, journal, you know, yeah, yeah, a sonic yeah, yeah. diary of literally from the moment I, I, you know, I left the band situation and Cape Town yeah. and I came here to pursue my solo mm -hmm. career and writing with these different producers now and having that be, you know, the new environment where I, you know, create my music and create my art. Um, so, yeah, it was the perfect way. And that's why I even called it a journal because mm -hmm. um, it just made sense to call it that because it was literally m music and material that I had been working on just before I even transitioned into a solo artist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the music speaks for itself. You know, the sounds also speak for themselves. Um, and yeah, I'm just so proud of that project. And it's been an exciting piece um, or part of my um, of my continued, <laughs> you know, arc or my, yeah, my continued, um, yeah, just move, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, before this interview started, we were talking about how it is important to put your product out there. You know, it's not enough to be so talented and have a great show or album, but people have to discover it. So I, I love the rollout for your album and even the decision to release it, you know, with the Universal and Jaquel Entertainment Group. So I just wanted to ask you, how did that opportunity come together? Because that was a big way of coming out with your first project. And, you know, there was a ripple effect all over the continent. We got to know about you in Kenya, in East Africa, and we wouldn't have if it wasn't, you know, put out that way properly so big up to you on that and tell me about the rollout and the decision to to go that way yeah. oh my gosh i mean i have a lot um to thank to um to trezo you know who is you know who was literally a huge part of that project or me being able to roll out that project um of course i was si i'm signed to jacqueline entertainment uh, you know and we had a partnership with um universal music and i'm just glad that i had somebody like him who's also an artist somebody who um who loves and takes passion and takes pride in the type of and and has a particular, you know, um, what do you call this, uh, standard for the, you know, the quality he, of work that he releases. And it was just an honor to have, to have him as a mentor, um, to have him, have him as an executive producer, because I was able to, you know, send him songs and he was able to link me to producers as well, um, to write with, um, and to link me up with songwriters as well to write with. Um, so he's been a huge part of, oh, he's a huge link or a huge 
which thread um, part of the uh, of, of the pro of the project. Um, and yeah, I have him to thank. And we just got you know a really dope um, agency to help us um, you know put together my music video for Fly Away and just you know the the concept and just to have a clear idea because we basically came to Universal to say this is what we want to do. This is how we want their role the rollout to be mm -hmm. and yeah just massive thanks to to trezo and um and his leadership you know and his and his care and the time that you know he took um because i mean he's connected obviously because of who he is yeah. um and yeah and i think that is an, a huge advantage you know what i mean to have somebody like that who is so connected um, and I think that's also how the project could even, you know, reach and find its, you know, feet and, you know, go as far as it, as it, as it did. Um, yeah. And how is it going, um, you know, with your career since the launch of your, you know, album and since, you know, the breakout from the band, but you still have your band, you're still, you know, performing, collaborating with other artists. How's it feeling? How does it look? Are you happy with how things are going? Yeah. Um, I'm very, very happy, you know, I feel like as soon as the project, you know, launched and that was my biggest thing, like being able to just be, have a product out there that could, you know, just introduce me to the industry, introduce me to the world. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, as a solo artist, as a singer songwriter. Um, yeah, cause these are the things that I'm passionate about. I, you know, I, I really do want to get better as a songwriter. I do want to, um, just work more on my craft. So you were just telling me how it's been going, that it was really nice that you put out your product, you know, the right way and you really needed that type of food not footing but you needed that type of um, context to put yourself out in the industry for people to know the type of artist you are you know songs that represent you so how how is it you know going on from there so the journey has been amazing i mean also just the fact that i got to work with the people that i worked with on the record um i think that's how the music traveled you know what i mean like um people like Dakapo, dj zinte um and i mean sketchy bongo you know just um yeah I, i'm just it's been quite an amazing journey being able to just yeah being introduced to you know firstly the south african music industry and just the world at large you know and figuring this thing out as we go you know and it's exciting also and scary because it took me a while it took me a minute to be able to release this project and i was scared it was a daunting um experience because i was very much used to work always releasing music with a project with a group of people and now I was on my own essentially you know um so it's been really good for me personally because it's kind of fueled me it's kind of shown me also my um abilities what I'm capable of as an artist I've been able to travel I've been able to perform um you know with COVID even after COVID I think the end of um or the beginning of 2022 um I was able to travel and actually perform the, most of the the material um so it's been just such a, a fruitful and beautiful experience to be able to have something out there an idea just an, a little taste a little piece of this is what i have to offer this is what i'm about um i love this type of music this is what i'm into and just to introduce people also into my world um and to be vulnerable you know what i mean um so i'm hoping for more of that and yeah <laughs> I'm also happy that this project did well, not just like in on radio and you having to perform it out there, but you also got opportunities to have the music on different um films. Yes. Coming to America yes. being one of it and I think Happily Ever After on yes. Netflix. Exactly. That must have been a big deal, eh? Oh, a huge deal. Because for me, it's like I keep on ticking the boxes, you know, like, oh, yeah, finally, I've, you know, had my music on a film, an international film, you yeah. know. Um, Also, you know, Happily Ever After, just another surprise. I was like, oh, yay, I get to spread the music a bit further. You know, those are the opportunities that help us. And these opportunities came via Universal? Absolutely. Exactly. You know, just having, I guess, the company basically have having the people having the team you know that i work with Cherzo, who is you know was a huge focal mm -hmm. part of it you know and the agency that i was working with mm -hmm. and my partner also my writing partner claim car has been working with me um yeah i've just had a great support you know and 
I'm very grateful, you know, for the platform that I was able to use to be able to use, I mean, to be able to really use as a vehicle to release this project, you know. So, yeah, I do not take it lightly that I got an opportunity like that to be able to to use Universal, to use Jacquel Entertainment and um, to use also the, the collaborators, to work with the collaborators that I got to work with. Um, yeah, it threw, it's through that opportunity and I, I think it worked out well. <laughs> So I've noticed one thing about you. You're not just super talented, but you're also somebody who's highly collaborative. And I really like that of you because you you are so much talent by yourself, but you take so much pride in being able to work with all these other talented creatives around you and with companies that can also support you however they can. And I want you to maybe give a little advice to all the artists watching, like just to what extent is... um is it so important to have this sort of support and collaborative projects with other creatives and artists? Because some artists sit at home and they're like, oh no, I have my manager and I'm a great musician and that's that. Mm -hmm. But you could be sitting at home and you're so talented and still find a bigger talented team mm -hmm. to collaborate with, mm -hmm. to have a bigger impact. So from one artist to uh, um, the others, what would you say on this? I mean, Collaboration for me meant I could work, you know what I mean? Um, and not only for my own solo stuff, but with, you know, other people and actually um, expose myself into someone else's music or someone, you know what I mean? Someone else's art. Um, and I enjoy that, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel like for me as an artist, like the fact where I'm at now is through collaboration. Mm -hmm. And and I believe that comes from, you know, the culture that I come from, you know, the band culture, the live band culture, just working with other artists, writing with other artists, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sharing the same passion on stage with those people. Um, and I enjoy that very much. You know, I'm currently I'm part of a live band for Stogie T, um, with Bukani Dyer, Shane Cooper, Clem Carr, uh, Justin Baden host. And it's just a fire powerhouse. You know, these are people that I admire. They are in the jazz community also. That's the other interesting thing, you know, a community that I used to be a part of. Um, but now, you know, obviously because of, you know, the music that I'm making and where I'm at, not to say that I'm not a part of that community anymore, but I get to be able to work with those people, you know, work with my friends and my peers um, and just work in other exciting, you know, get to also tap out into the world that I'm always in because of my own solo work, but to get to expose myself to just other interesting things, you know? Um, so I think it's an opportunity to grow, you know, for as an artist, it's an opportunity to learn from others. Um, so it's very important. Collaboration is important because I get to to travel, you know, with Stogie T. Um, and I mean, with my project, not to say I don't get to travel, um, but you know, it's not, you know, the places are different, you know, but it's, then it's more frequent, you know what I mean? My schedule be becomes um, busy and I just get to live and explore. And I mean, when you get to travel, even that exposure to seeing the world and seeing other cultures and playing in other places, it's, you know what I mean? That that feeds you as an artist. I feel like that feeds um, how you produce your work and the work, the type of work that you produce. So it's a very important collaboration is like, I feel like that's how you survive as, you know, um, as an artist. Wow. Yeah. wow, wow, wow. It's been so amazing to meet you, to talk to you, to listen to your music, to meet the wonderful voice behind the powerful, you know, journal, um, EP and pro pro production. It's been just such an honor and I'm very thankful, you know, to have gotten this opportunity to talk to you. Um, I wish you well in everything. I'm sure there's yeah, new you. records coming. Yeah. Absolutely. New music coming. Um, I took a bit of a break, but it was a good break because I was performing live also and just getting to be out there with the fans. People are listening to the music who are buying the music. Also introducing myself to, you know, the live audience, you know, because there are people who, you know, come to my shows who might not have even heard, you know, yeah. me as an artist. Yeah. So it's been a great way just to also, yeah. you know, be able to introduce the music and mm -hmm. to also leave it there, you know, and start a new chapter. So there's definitely new music coming. Yeah. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Any last message you want to share over to your fans and all the people watching who even might not know of you, but they're now getting introduced to you. What do you want to tell them? Uh, I just want to say 
Firstly, thank you to everybody who's been listening and supporting my music. I am super grateful. That's how I get to do what I get to do. Mm-hmm. And to anybody who actually doesn't know me, please check out the music. You will definitely love it, I promise. Um, even if you don't, just like tell your friends about it, you know. And some I know for sure somebody will like it in your circle. But I, I'm sure I put my love and sweat and my passion into my music and my work. So, yeah, just have a look. And thank you. That's a wrap right here in Johannesburg, or if you like Josie, and I was speaking to Bonj, an amazing artist and creative who is operating here in South Africa and beyond. So if you're watching and you're a dope music promoter from wherever, please book Bonj because she's going to blow your mind away. Thank you so much to Jess and Akum Agency for this opportunity. Thank you all for watching VIP Access. I will be back every week with yet another amazing artist who's going to inspire you and ask yourself what am i doing i need to wake up and uh, create dope art and content thank you for listening me and bonjour off bye vip access, VIP access. with a nico and africa loud